I'm now starting some work on the station area itself. One of the jobs I've got to do is to put a, uh, a wall at the rear of this platform. So I'm going to go again for the style used in the southern region which was to use prefabricated concrete panels for the walling. I'm just using old serial packet card to make these. This was a prototype as you can see. This was the side that would face the platform itself. So uh, the, uh, the joins are uh, at a suitable height so they rest on the top just like this. I wasn't satisfied with this one however as I thought the joints were too close so uh, I've made another. So this is the uh, this is the one that's going to be fitted you can see that this is just tails of strips of card for the rear of the wall. I shall, um, I shall snip these off in a minute or two when the glue's dried but that will that's basically going to go along there and it will be painted up and there'll probably be some information on there. There might be a poster or two or a timetable. I'll see what uh, what I've got that's suitable. I've made some simple steps using card and cork and they'll just drop over there. I've used the tried and trusted old dried tea leaves to ballast at the side of the track next to the signal box and I've put some vegetation around there. Uh, it's probably a bit heavy at the moment. I might have to uh, change that slightly but uh, it sort of blends the box in and uh, I've used some uh, brick papers which are uh, pavements, uh, super quick brick papers. Uh, they were around in the, uh, the early 60s so uh, I've used that to put some sort of um, walkway around the uh, the front of the uh, the signal box so uh, and as you can see at the rear of the signal box and just behind the platform there's an area where vehicles can be left and the owners can then access the uh, the platform by the steps I've made at the rear the roadway itself is just uh, it's just three mil cork tile which I've uh, I've covered with a little bit of uh, paper and glue just to give it a little bit of a textured effect and then painted it and behind where the car is I'll have to uh, try and give that a little bit of a more 3D effect but I'll, uh, I'll be leaving that for another, uh, another job later. The station building here and the associated gents loo it's a great kit it's made by Wills but Wills again weren't actually producing in the late 1950s or 60s this particular kit as I understand so I'm trying to do my best to reimagine what a scenic layout may have looked like if it had been made using the available models kits that were around during the late 1950s and the early 1960s so I'm going to replace that station building The obvious choice is the FX booking hall which I made a while ago. Um, it's painted up in, in Midland colours um, so it's got that uh, that lovely sort of uh, maroony crimson and uh, the cream uh, contrasting colour on the uh, on the gate for the booking hall and the valance and you know that, that, that fits in nicely and sits in there quite well. I want something with a bit more character so I'm going to replace that So what I've decided to do is something that was fairly commonplace back in the 1950s and early 1960s from what I've been reading in um, old copies of Railway Modeler and that is to take what was then made by FX, uh, the village church, now as you can see made by Dapol Kitmaster and to do a conversion job on that and turn it into a country station building so this video really shows my efforts to convert the church and turn it into a country station building.
this is the uh, the dapol kit the actual uh, conversion I want to do involves um, a little bit of work on the longer walls of the church and the adjoining building so if we look at the illustration it's the long wall at the front here and the wall here I've made a sketch of the uh, the walls and where I need to make the cuts so here's the the big wall of the church which will need to be cut and here's the smaller wall which again will need to be cut the main wall needs to be cut in two pieces down there and down there the smaller wall just needs a doorway opening cutting where those two windows are so when I've done the cuts the main wall will be reduced I'll have taken out the entrance porch for the church and I'll be joining them here where the uh, the doorway openings being made the smaller section of wall I will have cut out a doorway opening there now the church roof which is uh, quite a decent size here's the uh, here's the plastic sheet that will be cut so that it fits the size of the wall along here the smaller roof which is a pitched roof in the kit I won't need to use because what I'll be doing is I'll be putting a flat roof in round here and I'll be using pieces of flat card to uh, to build that I'll use parts of the plastic kit to uh, put the edging wall um, around here at the top um, extra pieces then are the flat roof detail I'm also thinking about putting an additional chimney in at the end here at the other end this is where there's an existing part of the kit which is uh, a tower for the church and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll adapt that I'll turn that into another chimney the other detail to consider is a canopy to uh, go out from the uh, the front of the main building just to give the passengers a little bit of shelter and uh, there'll be a little bit of detail so I've got like a, a note to do some sort of notice or poster board to uh, to pop in over there I mean there might be room over here as well just to detail it and so the first job to do really is to uh, get the uh, get the knife and uh, do some surgery on that front wall yeah it's gone there it's gone there so that's the that's the first section cut so I'll pop that over there out the way the next section to be cut is over here uh, just adjacent to the moulding for the entrance porch which we uh, we don't need on this so uh, I'm just going to make sure I get my line going up where the um, where the stonework is and then uh, we'll have the two pieces to uh, to put together and then work out where the doorway is going to be uh, going to be done so I've used the scissors to cut this thin section here and then I'm just cutting with the knife the other part of the doorway opening and then that uh, that wall there you'll see in a minute will butt up to the other wall that I've cut out just finishing off the doorway opening on this side of the wall nearly there obviously try and do as tidy a cut as you can to there we go so there's the uh, there's the other side of the wall done so the first section I cut is here and the section you've just seen me cut needs to be glued to it there I'm going to have to adjust the size of the roof and that but and the back wall as well will need shortening to be the same size as this here's the other doorway and I've cut that from the uh, the second wall the smaller wall and I use that using some scissors and I tidied it up with the, the knife and uh, a needle file with the rear wall you'll notice there's two beveled edges at each end so I'm going to have to split it so I can actually make sure that I get a beveled edge 
attached to the two sort of um, end walls so uh, it, uh, it's, it's equal and it reflects the um, the designs on the back so you can see there's like a little ledge up there and if I turn that round you can see there's some uh, some stonework there on the corner so it's just to make sure that uh, it all sort of balances out properly I've held the model down with blue tack on the cutting mat and I've squared it up with pieces of card and strengthened it with pieces of card I've also cut this doorway in the back wall so there is an entrance or an exit from the rear of the building and all I've got to do now really is uh, get the uh, get the smaller building to uh, fit round here and uh, that'll be my next job parts for the smaller building cut the doorway out and I've just got to trim the pointy bit of this end wall off so that there's a flat roof uh, all round I've removed the top part of this end wall as you can see and then this structure here is going to have a flat roof and it will join on there so I'm going to run the chimney up here I've got enough sections left over from the other parts of the kit so there's two there's two parts here that you can uh, you can spot which I can use and then I've got some extra wall left over from my other cuts so uh, I can cut a strip out of this I've just mocked up where the chimney and the flat roof will be chimney is actually fixed to this end wall I'm going to have to put a smaller wall section in there because I'm going to run some roofing down here and down here each side of the chimney so it's all properly uh, constructed and then this area around here will be where the flat roof section is and there will be uh, some edging strips the flat roof is going to be finished around the top with these sections which came in the kit these are the sections that fitted on the ends of the church roof well I'm going to use them to go around the top edge of the flat roof I've cut two slots one here and one here this allows the cardboard roof that I've made to actually go flush up against this end wall because there are two supports one here one over here at this end which the roof uh, will rest on and I'm bringing out a pitched roof just beyond the end of the chimney so I'll need this piece here which is what I trimmed off the end wall down here which I'm tapping with the pencil so that will rest around about there and then the roof sections will come across to it I've taken the centre of the chimney line and marked it here and I've put the markings here for the placement of, uh, of this I've just glued a little tab on the back of it so I can sort of just uh, pop it in there and make sure I've got the uh, the centres all lined up and then I'll I'll cut some templates around here and here for the uh, for the roof I've also put a centre line down the wall so when I pop that in place I can just line up the two lines and know that I've got it exactly where I need it so that it's uh, in the midpoint of the uh, of the chimney